Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalrin, and today I want to develop with you guys a one-shot macro for assassination as well as a few methods to improve assassination burst damage. When we're talking about assassination rogue, we're talking about a rogue spec that has a ton of of damage under its utilities and fairly short cooldowns in terms of dealing damage to enemies. One of the things that's cool about assassination rogues is just how well your abilities combo together. Some of the things people have enjoyed in the past is one shot macro so today I want to make a one shot macro that also utilizes and optimizes your damage to the highest and I want to kind of go over through this in this video. So the things we're going to talk about are the class talent setup, the pvp talent setup, we're going to talk about the rotation and pandemic mechanic for empowering our exsanguinates and overall how do you use the rotation, construct the macro and then go test it in BGs. So here we are on my assassination rogue, nothing amazing here, I can get for PvP a slightly higher item level if I equip the stamina trinket which does not give me stamina, in PvP it only gives you the item level because stats don't matter, so I would have about 842 item level. I have a fairly built up artifact weapon and I feel like it would have been easier if I went the artifact weapon towards from the shadows because it would help out this burst, but getting bagger tricks would also be helpful. The most important thing for this though is to have blood of the assassinated so you can have much stronger stronger bleeds when it comes to your rupture bleeds. This mechanic of just a random chance for your bleeds to be stronger, especially through rupture, is going to be the definite help in terms of getting you the most amount of damage. Alright, so let's talk about the class talents. We're going to be running the basic general class talents, but one slight change. This is what mo most people are running right now. Master Poison, Subterfuge, Vigor, Elusiveness, Internal Bleeding, Exsanguinate, and now instead of going Venom Rush, I'm going Mark for Death. Mark for Death is so that we can extend the duration of our ruptures, as we're going to be applying two layers of rupture, which I'll talk about in a second. The honor talents would be, I like adaptation, the trinket doesn't matter. The only main important power would be is to get System Shock, but I don't have System Shock right now, so I'm using Creeping Venom. But Deadly Brew, Honor Among Thieves, Unfair Advantage would be the better option. So, the ounce you want out of this are Unfair Advantage, Deadly Brew, and System Shock in order to make this work. The actual rotation, what are we talking about? First things first, we are going to go through our rotation, we're going to get a corrode on the target, we're going to stun the target in that order, in order to have the longest duration of our cheap shot, then we're going to apply rupture. We're going to extend our rupture and then use that extended rupture with exsanguinate, so we can take this long rupture dots and then shorten it by half because the exsanguinate increases your bleeds by 100% making whatever like let's say 30 seconds worth of bleed uh, happen in 15 seconds. So instead of your bleeds taking every 2 seconds, they'll be taking every 1 second. The way you extend your bleeds is with a mechanic called Pandemic and this is something you need to know when it comes to PvE and playing any dot based specs for player versus environment content or raiding content. What the pandemic uh, stacking mechanic is, let's say we have a train dummy right here, uh, actually I'll use this one because of different numbers, and we have rupture. Rupture at 5 comp points will give us about 24 seconds worth of bleed, so I'm going to wait until I have my energy back and I'm going to apply full rupture. As you can see the rupture is 24 seconds and it's starting to take down. But what you can do is if you restack that rupture it'll extend its duration to 31 seconds maximum. So you can have a 31 seconds worth of a rupture. So in PvE content you would wait until your bleed is at about 8 seconds or less and then you would reapply a rupture which makes it so that you don't lose any bleed uptime but you're simply extending it to its maximum potential so you never have to worry about bleeds and that's basically what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get a long ass rupture in terms of its duration and then he's exsanguinate to shorten it by half. 31 seconds worth of damage into 15 seconds, so the damage is going to tick much faster. When we have this happen, and we were, since we're applying two uh, forms of rupture back to back, we have a chance to get blood of the assassinate, which for 10 seconds will give a rupture damage increase by 100%. So out of the 15 seconds of rupture that we get with exsanguinate, we're also getting maybe a 10 seconds of 100% damage increase to the rupture. That combined with some of the other abilities such as Vendetta for 30% damage increase in general and Vendetta being able to reward us energy will allow us to be able to get a much easier to set up for burst and we're thinking mutilates in there, we have all the other bleeds there, we have Garrote, we have Kidney Shot with internal bleeding available, we also are trying to get an Venom whenever possible, we have the artifact weapon ticking, so we have all these things together with super strong ruptures which will give you the most amount of possible damage especially in an opener. So this is something what this looks like. I'm gonna demonstrate on the train dummy and try to talk through it as I go. You start with Garrote and Cheap Shot, mainly because you want to get the Garrote for the bleed damage, then you have Cheap Shot for the stun. 
After that, you go into Sync Rupture, and then you go into Go Through Your Rotation. The reason I open up with Garode and Cheap Shot, I think I want to mention that first of all, is so we can have the longest amount of duration with our stun. If we stun first, then Garode, we're losing the uptime on our stun by syncing a global cooldown into the duration that we have for the stun. So all this whole rotation needs to happen very, very, very quickly. So we need to be able to chain two stuns together on an enemy while being able to set up a full rupture. So what I'm going to do is Garot, then Cheap Shot. Then I'm going to throw a rupture on the enemy to get the baseline rupture, which will be 16 seconds. Afterwards, I'll have basically no energy, which is then when I'll use Vendetta to refill my energy thanks to the artifact weapon trait called Urge to Kill, which will refill my energy because I use Vendetta. I'm going to sink two mutilates into the enemy, no matter what combo points I get. After that, sending those two mutilates, I'm going to kidney the enemy because by then, Cheap Shot would have run out. And I'm going to throw the enemy into another stun. And then I'm going to mark for death. Rupture the enemy for a full 24 seconds added to whatever amount of seconds I have left for Rupture, giving me the full duration of 31 seconds. I'm going to throw Exsanguinate and I'm going to use King's Bane for the artifact weapon in order to layer all my dots. And from there you're just going to maintain your mutilates and then get in your, after you uh, get in 4 or 5 comp points of mutilates, you're going to get an Envenom on your target and you're just going to keep trying to sink as much damage as possible while you're bursting on an enemy. So let me show you what this is kind of what this looks like. As we see, we have Blood of the Assassinated on the target as well. And this is a PvP train dummy, so this is similar to the numbers that you would normally get in PvP. So, as you can see, I still have Rupture ticking, even though after all my other bleeds have run out, Rupture is still able to supply me with energy as it was a long, prolonged Rupture. But because of the, uh, the stacking for it that we got and Exsanguinate allowing it to keep ticking every second, that means you're getting, what, 7 energy every 1 second, which is a little bit insane and kind of crazy when you think about it, because you're just getting a lot of energy and a lot of burst damage. So, how do we construct this macro ourselves? And this is really easy, you can just make it into a cast sequence macro. I have a predetermined macro right here, uh, assass, let's just call it that. Here we go, we have a hunter macro that we're going to borrow. So, cast sequence with combat target, we're going to start it off with Garot. Alright, now we have our macro and what I'm going to do is I'm going to test it and we'll see if we can maybe make this macro a little bit stronger by using other supplies for maybe the auction house for some engineering purposes. And I'm pretty sure we can use some of these items out there. So let me go and just, I'm going to spam the macro and we'll see if I get any hiccups. So far so good, it got the kidney down right, getting the mutilates in there. Got an Venom. Oh wow, this actually works. This macro works. Nice, and it resets as Assassination Burst all over again. Nice, so this is gonna be fun to play around with. All right, now let's see if we can actually increase the potency of this macro. All right, so we have Gunpowder Charge, which will deal 300k worth of fire damage on an enemy, so that'll be kind of fun to play around with. Saltwater Potion, we might be able to use that in the BG. Increase damage down by 30% for 12 seconds, only usable in Battlegrounds. Might find a way to sink that in there. We're gonna buy a few. I'm not sure if we'll be able to use both of them in a single macro though, so I will make different macros where I'll be using these uh, Saltwater Potions or whatever at different intervals, so let me go test that real quick. Alright, well, ne uh, now I'm going to go queue into some battlegrounds and make two different variations of the macro. One where I'm using the gunpowder charge and the other one I'm using the saltwater potion. And hopefully I'll be able to combo them well into the macro to the point where it'll look pretty effective. So I'll be using both of them to test out in BGs. So I'll be right back guys and until then, enjoy the footage.
as we can see, the burst damage is there, but I feel like the one-shot macro serves its purpose. Its purpose ends up being the most amount of optimized damage, and this damage definitely increases the more artifact power you have, the more traits you have for your artifact power, like for example Bag of Tricks and even from the Shadows, and higher item level does help. Assassination is a spec that has a lot of consistent pressure, and you don't really burst in a single go, but you kind of just like ramp up that pressure so high that it's hard for most classes to deal with. Basic class assassination, you're not really going to be all about this one-shot macro and bursting people in a single opener. While assassination rogues are fairly simple to pick up, as you get abilities like Mutilate is your only common point builder, you get that you need to apply your bleeds, the spec has at least some depth, it's not really so shallow as to just being stuck to a one-shot macro, but this macro is something that you guys can use and it'll teach you all the things that you need in order to be able to get as much damage out on the enemy. So for anybody either learning assassination or currently playing, this is something for you guys to mess around with. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully you guys enjoy the one-shot macro. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below and I will see you guys in the next video.